all gloved up, we've got our clamps ready, we've got our pot of glue, we just want to make sure there's no bits and pieces in the way. This is one of the polyurethane foaming glues, it's a rapid setting one. Um, plenty strong enough for the job. Also easy to clean out of the groove afterwards, which is quite important. You could glue this together with epoxy, and if it got in that groove, you'd spend the rest of your life trying to get it out. There's our glue, there's our top piece. A couple of pieces of battening just to stop the dents on the top. Now just bear in mind if you're clamping this together, the first third of it, there isn't actually any wood to wood contact, so there's no point putting the clamps in the middle or near this edge, because it will just squeeze that together and open up the bottom. So the clamps need to be just the, the sort of lower side of the middle. And it's also A bit of a job keeping it lined up for the first few clamps because the glue just loves sliding things around. You may just have to jiggle the clamp a little bit to make sure that when it does up we maintain this flat edge at the top here. Do a couple more clamps up lightly and then we can worry about adjusting it. So it's just a case of sliding the edges together. Roll that one back a little bit as well. We're not worried about our bottom edge, it's this top edge that we use to machine the grooves on that we want lined up. So slide it into place, tighten the clamp, let go and see if it moves. This is the general principle. This is the first setting uh, polyurethane glue, so we've got about 10 minutes really to, to get everything clamped up and where we want it. Um, and it takes about half, three quarters of an hour for it to be set to the point where we could unclamp it if we needed to. Um, I'll probably leave it the best part of an hour before I clamp up another set of pieces. And then when we machine it later on, it should be fairly fully cured. I'm putting the the clamps roughly every 
sort of foot or so. Bit of a bigger gap here for no particular reason, but once the pieces are clamped and lined up, I can always go back and stick extra clamps in between. The general rule, the more clamps the better. I think one of the lower pieces would just add a little tiny kick at the end, which is what we're trying to even out. If we can clamp it like that. Bad. We'll just stick a few extra clamps in here and there. If we look along the back edge, the glue's squirting out just about everywhere, so we must be doing something right. We can just take a look down our groove. That's looking as straight as we can hope it to be, really. There's a little slight little curve that way in our bits of wood but we knew that with one of them anyway so hopefully when it's all unclamped that's not going to get worse and we'll leave that for the glue to go off right so we clamped up oh. Bits of wood, let the glue dry, taking it off the jig and we're left with a nice foamy mess on the back. But that's easy enough just to get rid of. Now there's more likely than not a similar amount of glue that's actually squeezed out into our groove. And that needs to come out. And so with a, a little bit of ingenuity and a strip of metal with the end thinned and twisted we can make a little tool that hopefully goes into the slot and we'll reach down to the bottom of the groove and we can just run that through there That's got the slot cleaned out. So now we want to run it through the thicknesser to just get it down to the right size, square off all the sides. The minimum size this has got to be is two inches and it's two and an eighth now. So we've got a little bit we can play with. Our top edge is are pretty parallel and level with each other so if we put that down on the bed of the planer and take a skimming off this side and then we'll just keep reducing it turn it over until we're down to our two inches
So there's our sort of bare spar squared off, planed up. It's exactly the same for a gaff or a boom on these boats. The only difference is the final length, really. Um, this one's going to be a boom, and so we'll um, we're going to leave the forward end of the boom for the gooseneck fitting, which I, I don't have at the moment. So we'll leave that end square, ready to be finished and, and messed around with. But the after end of the boom. Okay. So we can mark the after end of the boom. Just square that around there. And I'll measure forward from there. That's 10 foot. That's going to be the end of the boom there. So we just want to leave the final four inches for the gooseneck fitting and a bit of fairing in and shaping. So if I find a piece of masking tape, I'm just going to wrap a piece of masking tape around there so that it's visible when I'm running up there with the router so I can stop the shaping there and leave leave that square to be shaped later. <laughs> 